When doing visual effects for a film, you'll receive a turnover of clips inside of a project timeline. Now this project timeline will have the original clip files from either the red camera or whatever type of camera format there is. And we will need to name these clips as our proper naming convention. So we'll go to the file tab and change the name input to whatever our name convention is. I prefer the name of the project underscore shot 10 and then BG1. If there's any FG material, you can name it FG. Now go through and copy paste that naming convention into each individual clip inside of your timeline, changing the shot number accordingly. Once your shots are named correctly, we're going to need to adjust our project settings to reflect the type of clips that we have. Currently, this is viewing it as regular 1886, work in an ACES pipeline. So we'll change from our color science to ACES CC. We'll make sure all of our settings are set correctly and our output transform is set to ACES CG. And our color space is tagged as Rec 709, which is what our current color space that we received is. This is practice footage from Action VFX's website, and you can check all of their color space options directly on the website. For these particular shots, it has it listed as Rec 709 ACES output. Now we need to change the resolution of our timeline, and we can see that it is set to 2048 by 1080. So under our project settings, change your timeline resolution to reflect that. Once this is adjusted, our image will automatically scale to the edge of our frame and we won't have any weird black lines inside of our shot. Now under our render settings, we're gonna to want to change our render output to an EXR. RGB half should be fine. Now if we render it out as individual clips, we can go to our file tab and give it a custom name. This will be using our clip name that we entered earlier. So if you type percent clip name, do the same for the file subfolder so that way it saves it in a directory for every single shot. The digits for the file name will dictate how many numbers there are at the end of each file frame. We only want four and having start at 1000, which is pretty industry standard. Now, if we add this to our render queue, we can go ahead and render all in our scene. If we go check our folder, we will now see three different directories, each having our naming convention, as well as the correct number of digits at the end of our shot. Starting from frame 1000, all the way to the end of each shot. Now, open up Nuke, we can make sure our color is set correctly here. We are using our OCIO of the ACES 1.3, just as before, and that way, when we drag and drop in our shots directly into Nuke, we will have the correct color tagging. We can double check our input transform has ACES CG selected, and that will appear below our clip. Now, our shot should be in the correct color space that it needs to be at. If we want to make sure that we're viewing it exactly the same way that DaVinci Resolve is viewing it, we can change our display transform to 1886, since that is what our DaVinci Resolve timeline is doing. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if there are any other tutorials you'd like to see, feel free to comment those down below. Weekly, we create live streams where we create CG shots from scratch, and I just recently started doing a compositing stream once a week as well. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so that way you don't miss out on any of our live streams or new videos that we post.